Okay, so today we're going to walk through eigenfunction expansion. Uh, this is really what we're doing when we use the method of separation of variables. It is more general and, and more powerful than separation of variables though, uh, because we can also use eigenfunction expansion to solve inhomogeneous partial differential equations. We still need homogeneous boundary conditions, uh, but as we will see in, in the next lecture, many times when we don't have inhomogeneous boundary conditions, we are able to uh, make an equation with inhomogeneous boundary conditions have homogeneous boundary conditions at the expense of making that equation inhomogeneous. So we can start with uh, now a broad spectrum of different types of differential equations, convert them to a form where eigenfunction expansion will work, and then solve them. And uh, we're going to learn the method for doing the eigenfunction expansion today. Uh, so the first step in the eigenfunction expansion is to identify a sturm liouville operator. Once we've identified a sturm liouville operator in the problem, we know that these sturm liouville operators are going to be uh, self-adjoint. Uh, they have, uh, if they have homogeneous boundary conditions, they will have all the properties of a Hermitian operator. And then in that case, we can expand the equation in terms of the sturm liouville problem's eigenfunctions uh, with time-dependent coefficients in front of every one of those eigenfunctions. And that's the basic strategy uh, behind what we're going to do. Okay, so let's start with an example. Uh, the example is the heat equation, but here we also have this inhomogeneous term f of x and t. Uh, so this is an inhomogeneous partial differential equation. We're going to impose boundary conditions on this that are homogeneous. They're actually the easiest kind uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions. Uh, everything that I'm going to do here, though, is only affected in the sense that the eigenfunctions will be different when the boundary conditions are different. Uh, now, I'm also going to need to specify some initial conditions, and right now we'll just use the generic g of x uh, to describe those initial conditions. Okay, so this is basically your heated rod problem, uh, where we've got a uh, temperature of zero at the two ends of the rod and insulation all the way through, uh, perhaps with some heat being generated due to resistance of, of the wire if there's a current flowing through this, for example. Okay, so we know the eigenfunctions for this particular problem. Uh, that is that we have a second derivative operator with these boundary conditions and we know that that gives rise uh, to the eigenfunctions that are just signs uh, with an n pi x argument. Uh, so the eigenfunctions, um, the eigenfunctions are this and the eigenvalues uh, are uh, these negative n pi squared uh, terms. So we're going to assume now uh, that we can expand the full solution as a sum of the eigenfunctions with time-dependent coefficients, and that's this tk of t. Okay, so now we're also going to have to expand the inhomogeneous driving force term uh, in this problem, and that is that to say that f of x and t is also going to be an expansion of, in the eigenfunction basis with time-dependent coefficients, which we will call fk of t uh, to signify that they are the kth, the kth mode uh, with a time-dependent coefficient. Okay, so, uh, so this is our partial differential equation. When we plug in our guess, that is the eigenfunction expansion, uh, on the left-hand side, we're going to differentiate the time uh, functions, and on the right-hand side, we're going to act with the second derivative operator on uh, the, the eigenfunctions. Uh, time is just a constant in, in this operator. And so what pops out is, of course, that when you take the, take a, the kth eigenfunction and you act on it with the uh, sturm liouville operator, in this case just the second derivative operator, uh, out pops a uh, eigenvalue. And that eigenvalue is this minus mu k squared, uh, minus n k pi squared, if you want. Uh, over here, we're going to write our expansion as well, uh, so that we get everything in terms of the eigenvector basis. Now we're going to use the orthogonality of these eigenfunctions and, uh, and go through and get an equation to find those time-dependent coefficients. Okay, so when we uh, take the dot product on the left with the mth eigenfunction, we find that, uh, that tm prime multiplied by the squared norm of the mth eigenfunction is equal to uh, the eigenvalue of the mth eigenfunction multiplied by the mth eigenfunction uh, squared norm and the tm, and then here we have our time-dependent coefficient from the driving force term. Okay, so this thing sitting here is a first order ODE for time. All of these factors of the squared norms cancel away, and we are left uh, with this differential equation that gives us the, the TM coefficients in terms of the FM and the eigenvalues of the different modes. Uh, so now what we have is um, we can also go through and we, can, we know what these expansion coefficients are for the FKs. Uh, we, can, we can remember how to go through and compute a Fourier series. This is the same thing here. Uh, so now for each equation, 
uh, we're also going to uh, get an integration constant and that's going to help us match the initial conditions okay so uh, that's the basic strategy and let's go through now and actually do an example where we specify the driving force term in this case it's just a constant okay so this is the same equation but now I'm letting this f of x and t be a constant uh, have the same boundary conditions as before. The eigenfunctions here uh, are, are the same as they were before because the operator is the same and because the boundary conditions are the same. Those alone determine the eigenfunctions for the problem. Uh, the eigenvalues are of course also the same and uh, and what we what we want to do, I think I went off the page there a little bit. Uh, okay, so this is our expansion that we get. Uh, the expansion coefficients here are not time dependent because uh, the eigenfunctions are not time dependent. So, uh, so now we have our eigenfunctions. They're the same because the operator and the boundary conditions were the same, and the eigenvalues were the same uh, uh, for the same reason. Okay, so now how do we go through and solve this problem? Uh, we we use orthogonality uh, as as outlined above, and that reduces this problem to uh, to a differential equation for the TM time dependent coefficients. Here are the uh, FOIA coefficients for the inhomogeneous driving term. We have to go through and actually find those. Uh, you remember that uh, what I'm going to do is to, uh, is to uh, basically make a FOIA series of the constant rho. And so uh, the coefficients in that FOIA series are given by this. They depend on the inner product of the mth eigenfunction with the function being expanded uh, divided by the squared norms of those eigenfunctions. So this is what's actually going on in all that inner product notation. It's just some integrals from 0 to 1 uh, with rho multiplied by the mth eigenfunction and then integrated. Uh, the squared norm of this function is 1 half, and so that's giving rise to the 2 when I put it in the, in the denominator. Uh, okay, so uh, this has two different, two different possibilities. One is that m is odd, and that gives you 4p over m pi. Uh, the other possibility is that m is even, and uh, in that case, uh, we have uh, the result uh, that this, this integral goes to zero. Um, okay, so, so that's just basically looking at these oscillations. If you want, uh, when I have this between zero and one, uh, I get a non-zero contribution. And when I have this between zero and one, these two areas cancel, and I get a zero contribution. So that's the odd and the even cases here. Okay, so uh, now one thing that may seem kind of surprising if you're new to this area is that we are claiming that we can add a whole series of these sines and cosines in this FOIA series and get a constant valued function, right? So how can oscillatory functions uh, with all different wavelengths ever add up to give you uh, a constant? Well, this is, the, this is showing the expansion. Uh, you can see that at one term, it doesn't really look anything like constant. Uh, by the time we get out to five terms, it is starting to look roughly constant, and certainly by the time we get to 125 terms, uh, it looks all constant across the middle. There is always a little overshoot here at the edge, and that's called Gibbs phenomena. Uh, it takes really uh, an infinity of terms to get rid of that uh, problem, uh, because there is always a little overshoot. and. Uh, and so there's a whole literature on analyzing the behavior of these overshoots at discontinuities. Uh, it's important to realize that this is only happening because our initial condition uh, is discontinuous at the boundary of our problem. The, the solutions have to go to zero here, and the initial condition goes to one. Okay, so, so that's why we're having this Gibbs phenomena uh, happening right here. Okay, but in the limit as n goes to infinity, uh, in the number of terms, uh, this goes away, and there's no problem. Okay, so let's go on and uh, talk about um, what we're going to do, uh, what we've done so far. So we have the eigenfunctions, uh, we have the eigenvalues, we expanded the inhomogeneous term uh, in terms of the eigenfunctions, we obtained equations for the time-dependent coefficients, uh, and now we have left to solve those equations. Uh, they are first order uh, linear differential equations. Some of them have a, have a driving term coefficient and some of them do not. Uh, so the, the, odd, uh, the odd integers m give rise to a solution for t that looks like this. The even integers m uh, just describe an exponential decay to zero. Uh, so, so it's important to realize that these are decaying to a non-zero steady state and these are decaying uh, to zero. And, and that's a steady state for that coefficient. Uh, strange thing to think about, but it will all make sense at the end when we see the solution. Okay, the AMs here 
are constants of integration that came out of solving that first order differential equation. And, and we have to determine those by going through and matching our initial conditions now. Okay, so in the general case we have uh, u at the initial time uh, is equal to g of x. And so we could expand that g of x uh, by taking our uh, time dependent coefficients at the initial time and uh, multiplying each of them by the corresponding eigenfunction. Okay, so now uh, what are we going to do with that? Well, we plug in 0 into the solution that we just derived for the differential equation, and uh, this is what, what it reduces to. If m is even, uh, we found that it reduced just to ak, the steady state, um, steady state result. And if m was odd, uh, we got this offset uh, 4 rho over k pi cubed. Okay, so we've got two kinds of terms here in this expansion, and uh, I've sort of broken these uh, two sums apart. Uh, because the two terms look a little bit different. Okay, so now how do we go about finding these constants of integration, these ak uh, constants in each of these equations? Well, we use orthogonality again, right? That's the whole idea of using these, uh, these uh, eigenfunction expansion is that orthogonality will allow us to find the Fourier coefficient as a function of time for every mode in the problem. Uh, so here's the expansion. Uh, you, you basically take an inner product on the left with the mth eigenfunction. Uh, on the left-hand side of this equation, we have the inner product with g of x. That's our initial condition. On the right-hand side, we have this giant expansion with unknown coefficients. Uh, but, of course, the mth eigenfunction is going to be orthogonal to all but one of these terms. Uh, and so if that term, m, is even, then we have uh, inner product of xm with g is, uh, is related to the squared norm of xm and the mth, and the mth coefficient. If m is odd, uh, we get the mth coefficient with this little uh, with this little offset coming from the uh, resistive heating in our wire. If you remember back to the beginning of the problem, okay. So let's go on and talk about um, the let's go on and talk about the specific case where we let uh, g of x be equal to zero. Okay. So in that case, um, we are going to find that when m is even. Uh, the inner product of the mth eigenfunction with g is just 0, and that equation that we derived uh, right here above uh, is going to give us am uh, equals 0. When m is odd, uh, the inner product with g is again going to be 0. Uh, now the norm of the function doesn't matter, and we have am uh, equals negative 4 rho over m pi cubed. Okay, so the the even coefficients, the even part of the series all vanishes, and only the odd part remains. Okay, so, so now we can write down the solution. We're summing over. Okay, so there's the uh, full solution all written out as a summation. Uh, I have just divided by the row because it's a, some numerical constant, uh, and, and plotted u uh, normalized by rho uh, as a function of x at different times. At the initial time, we have that, that uh, the g of x, the u of x zero, was just equal to zero. So this is where we are at the initial time. And as time goes on, uh, that solution increases, increases, increases up to the point uh, where it reaches this steady state profile at t equals infinity. Um, and, uh, and so that's the solution. And that's, that's probably what you'd expect if you had uh, clamped the temperature at zero at the two ends of this rod and had some resistive source of heating. If the only way for that heat to escape the rod is to diffuse from the middle uh, out to the edge, heat will build up until uh, it reaches a point where the rate at which it's diffusing uh, out outward through the ends of the rod is in balance with the rate at which it's being generated in the interior of the rod. And that results in this profile here. Okay, so, um, so that's it for eigenfunction expansions. Um, we, uh, of course, will do homework problems uh, where these will be a little bit more difficult and where the eigenfunctions are not sines and cosines. Uh, so so uh, later in the course, we will see sturm liouville problems uh, that give rise to Bessel functions, that give rise to Legendre polynomials, and all of these kinds of things. And so, uh, but the principle is the same. You're doing an expansion in the eigenfunction basis and finding time-dependent coefficients that describe um, how the components along that particular mode in the solution evolve with time. Okay.